There's people all over now in the Haram Sharif. Assalamu alaikum, kif al hal, mashallah, alhamdulillah, wallahi fi khair ya akhi, fi na'ma, ahna guddam bayt Allah, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, I was in Mecca, uh, Medina, and this one man pulls out and said, alhamdulillah, kif al hal, bi khair, alhamdulillah, ahna and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah yibarak feek. Tayyib ya akhi, khalina, yani, we don't need to hear it. Give me a break, how are you? You know, make the co coffee hot by the time I get there. Well, what are you going to say? What's so important? Really, what's so important? What is so important? I, I, I mean, I'm asking myself that question. What is so important? Even the Christians turn off those things when they go into their churches. My God, even the Christians turn off those things when they go into their churches. I mean, really, what, what, what's, what happened to this ummah? La ilaha illallah. Really, I'm, 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 there's no exaggeration there. What happened to us that we have forgotten? I mean, the Jahli Arabs had a sense of the awe of the Kaaba. The Ummah Omar radiallahu if he heard a voice raised in the masjid of the Messenger of Allah, he went with his stick to warn them that the hurma of the, Allah's Messenger after his, his life is the same as when he was walking amongst us. There's no difference. لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي. Don't raise your voices over the voice of the Prophet. What is it to talk on a telephone? To why? Anyway, تنبيه الغافل. You know, we have to remind ourselves, and it's all غفلة. We're in غفلة. We're in heedlessness. That's what we're in. It's our disease. The heart has to be sincere for Allah. And Imam Qadi Abu Bakr said that the heavens and the earth stood. When they heard the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They were only commanded to worship Allah with ikhlas, and for him is the religion alone. Ikhlas, according to the Arab language, al-khalis is the one free of impurities. And one of the extraordinary things about the Arabic language is the word fitna, which means tribulation. Fitna means to test gold for alloys. It means to test gold for impurities. So the reason Allah gives us fitan is to see who is pure and who is impure. Because fitna reveals everything. It, it separates, it separates the, 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 the true believer from the munafiq. And, and uh, the head of the munafiqeen in Medina used to get up after every Juma and say, this is the last messenger of Allah. We have to give him victory. We have to give him strength. He used to do that after every Juma. He'd get up and he'd start boasting and saying, get out there and let's support this man. And then when, when the tribulation came, I, I have to go back to Medina. He didn't listen to my opinion. He starts making excuses. And this is what happened. And the amazing thing, and I've said this before, the amazing thing to me about the Muslims is when the fitna comes, people that have been sitting around like couch potatoes, watching life go by, suddenly become the most active people of the community. Calling up people, calling up, did you know he said this and that, and, he, and, and this happened and that happened, and we have to do something about it, and let's get rid of that person, and let's do this. Really, writing letters, emails, faxes, money. Why? Because now they have an opportunity to, sh to reveal their nature, to show you who they are. They're people that have fitna in their hearts. And that's why when the fitna comes, they're the ones that get out there and do all the damage. And those people are the people that when Islam is strong, they have no voice. Because the, the children of Medina, according to the Messenger of Allah, if the Dajjal came, right, they said the children of Medina would chase them away with sandals. That's a Muslim, that's a society that's not in ghafla because the Dajjal, his strength is heedlessness. Everybody's in heedlessness. Because la yakhruja Dajjal illa an dhuhla. He only comes out when everybody's in heedlessness. And, and this, is, this is what we have to guard ourselves from constantly is ghafla. Imam al Junaid radiallahu anhu said, the root disease. The root, they, they differ, the, the people of the heart differ about what the root disease is. But Imam al junaid said the root disease is ghafla. That is the root disease of the human heart, is heedlessness. So, 
Leban Khalis. Allah says in the Quran, Min baini farthin wa damin Lebanon Khalisa. From between farth, which is filth, and blood, which is nejis, comes pure milk. It's something extraordinary in this ayah because one, I mean, there's a scientific miracle uh, that was pointed out by Maurice Bukayil and others, but there's another important ishara here, and that is the nature of the mukhlis is that he is constantly surrounded by people who are not pure. They're impure. And in order to maintain his ikhlas and his sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to be vigilant. He has to guard himself. He has to maintain the purity of that milk. And the purity of the milk is guarded by not exposing it. Right? This is what we do to maintain purity of milk. We cover it. Right? And this is why you have to veil your actions. You have to hide. You have, Sidi Muhammad Sharif once sent me a letter and he said, make your actions in secret better than your actions in, in open, in public. And this is, this is the secret of ikhlas. You have to be true with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are alone, more so than you're in the public. And even though uh, it's a tradition that the, the ulama don't like, uh, there, was a, there was a group of, uh, of ghulat. They were extremists, but they called them the malamatiya. These were people that used to publicly do displays of dishonor in order for people to have a bad opinion of them. And uh, Sidi Muhammad Sharif and I were in Morocco once and we came out of a rest of a coffee house after Fajr. We'd, we'd gone, we prayed and went to this place and we were on our way to the airport and we came out and there was a man sitting there begging and I was about to give him something and then we, we saw next to him was a bottle of alcohol. And, and, and I, I was about to give him some Muhammad Sharif said, don't give him anything, he'll just buy something, he'll buy more alcohol. And then I said, Subhanallah. You know, I was thinking, yeah, you're right. And then, and then the man, he looked down at the bottle and he looked at us and he said, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim And then he looked up and he said, Allah fawq al jamia Allah is above everything. And then Muhammad Shiyu said, Astaghfirullah, I didn't see him drink, I just saw the bottle next to him and I made an assumption that was not correct to my Muslim brother. And that is having a good opinion of the slaves of Allah. But there, there used to be that tradition. I mean, it's, it's not an acceptable tradition. The ulama condemn it because you should honor your, yourself. But the point is, people went to an extreme, really, to be sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a bid'ah and it's not acceptable, but it expresses only a sentiment or a point that these people were very, they were serious about being sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so protecting that, between all the filth of the world, guarding that milk, that pure milk, that sa'igan the sharibin, it's it's easy to drink, it's sweet, and that's why the mu'min, when 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 people uh, when people mix with the mu'min, they love the mu'min because the mu'min is sweet. The Prophet said, "Al mu'minu hayyinun layyinun." He's gentle, he's sweet, his nature is good. The Prophet said, people were rude to him. The desert Arabs were rude to him. And he never returned their rudeness with rudeness. He smiled in their faces. He returned their bad manners with good character. And this is what he taught us to do with people. And, and we have to, it's mujahada, we have to struggle. The, 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 the sabr is in al ula. Patience, when, when the, the woman who was in the graveyard, and, and she was mourning over, and the Messenger of Allah passed by her, and he, and he said that uh, this is a musibah, and you should be patient. And she said, you didn't have the tribulation that I had. That's how she answered him. And he just left her. Now look at the character there. He didn't say, don't you know who I am? I'm the Messenger of Allah. You can't talk to me like that. He didn't say that. He saw she was mus she, musab. She was in tribulation. He left her to be in her tribulation. He gave her nasiha and she didn't accept it, but he recognized her psychological state. She was in a state that it was not useful or beneficial to continue with her and so he left her. I, this is wisdom, this is hikmah. And then he went to his house and somebody came by and he, and, and he said, don't you know who that was? That was the messenger of Allah. Suddenly remorse entered her heart. Astaghfirullah. And she went to his house and knocked on the door, Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know it was you. And the Messenger of Allah said, patience is in the first calamity, when the first thing hits. That's when, in other words, it, when the calamity hits, 
patience that Allah wants is at that point. That's the point Allah does not want you to lose control. That's the point to take. It's not when it's all over you say, oh, please forgive me. I didn't mean to punch you after you said that to me. You know, I'm sorry. No, it's to, to stop. I'm not going to punch him. Right? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to engage. I'm not. And that is mujahada. That is learning to suppress the nafs for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we're here for Allah. We're not here for, and this is ikhlas. To do it for Allah's sake. Really, to do this for Allah's sake. To forgive your brother for Allah's sake. To forgive your sister for Allah's sake. Not for them. To do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really. There's people in here that haven't talked to their brother or their sister. Or some of them to their mothers and their fathers. Don't be that person. Don't cut off your bloodship bonds. Don't be that person. Do it for the sake of Allah. And a man came to the message of Allah. He said, Ya Rasulullah. أَصِلُوا أَخِي وَيَقْطَعُنِي أُعْطِيهِ وَيَمْنَعُنِي أُوَاصِلُهُ وَلَا يُوَاصِلُهُ I give him, he withholds. I come to him, he cuts me off. What should I do? He said, that is Sidat al-Rahm. That what you're doing is the right thing and continue to do it even though he's cutting you off. That's Islam. That's Islam. And it's hard. Don't think this is an easy religion. We want to be people that make mujahada. We want to be people that honor ourselves because Allah has honored us when He said, لَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدم. We have ennobled Bani Adam. We have made you great people. We gave you a heart. We gave you intellect. We gave you the ability to overcome the worst aspects of yourself. And even if, if from time to time you capitulate, we've given you the means to renew and to restore the self through tawbah. What a gift from Allah. 